Recently, I completed a faithful restoration of an original 1977 TRS-80 Model 1 to its original working condition. It was a Frankenstein's monster of broken parts and pieces, eventually reassembled and repaired, including an expansion interface, 48K of RAM, disk doubler, and dual disk drives. I documented the restoration process in excruciating detail on my blog, but I wanted to make this video specifically to describe my current runaround for creating new 5 and a quarter inch disk media since the process can be quite a bit more convoluted than a lot of other systems. I should note that there are many convenient modern alternatives to physical data storage for the TRS-80 line of computers, including the FRED, MISE, MIES, HXC, etc. On my Model 3 that I also repaired, I do use a MIES for Wi-Fi and storage. But for this Model 1 project, I'm trying to remain as faithful as possible to the original hardware, which includes accessing media only via physical floppies or cassette tapes. This guide assumes you already have a knowingly working TRS-80 and corresponding floppy drives for it. I recommend cleaning the heads and re the pins of the drives to ensure optimal performance and read-write access. Also, my preference is to bulk erase floppy disks before proceeding to the initial formatting steps below. Initially, I had no floppy disks even to boot to TRS-DOS or any of the many variants. Rather than dealing with the complexities of modern to vintage translation to create the initial boot media, I used a novel bootstrapper utility by Jorgen Bussert. This technique requires at least 32K of RAM and establishes a floppy formatting and writing procedure via the native cassette interface. You first transfer the bootstrapper utility via an audio cable, which will prepare the rest of the procedure for you. I simply ran a mono 3.5mm line out from my headphone jack of my PC to the audio input of the TRS-80 audio cable and then played the FLAC audio or the cassette formats via the PlayCast utility. If using your computer or laptop as the host, make sure to disable any audio enhancements and crank up the volume. The bootstrapper file is loaded via Cassette Basic, which you can access by holding in the break key when powering up a machine connected to an expansion interface. Enter 40,000 for the reserved memory size, and then type system and press return. Enter B and press return again. Play the bootstrapper cassette audio, and you should see a flashing asterisk in the corner. When the transfer is complete, type a forward slash and hit enter. You'll then see a prompt to select the disk drive number, and then to confirm the choice, with zero typically being the primary drive of the TRS-80. After this, you begin playing the actual DOS floppy data audio, which will format the disk and then transfer each sector of data to the system's RAM, finally writing it to the disk. This takes about a minute per sector. Along the way, you'll see status updates, and if any sector fails, you'll have to try again. Consider different disks, drives, or audio transfer settings until you have a perfectly working combination. Eventually, if all goes well, you'll see a successful notice and your machine should now be rebootable from the floppy. I ran through this process to generate disk images of all major flavors of DOS to ensure I had the right one for any job needed, and added custom labels using my vintage early 90s label maker hooked to an old Packard Bell. But what about transferring individual applications to a floppy disk? There are thousands of TRS-80 programs archived online in several different formats. You'll find cassette basic files typically in a .cas extension and application files for DOS in a .cmd extension, as well as complete virtual disk images which might have a JV1, DSK, DMK, or IMD extension. As a first step toward creating your own compilation of programs on a given disk, you'll need to create a fresh disk image. Using Matthew Reed's TRS Tools utility, you can create new images or open existing ones to manage data, including extracting files from one image to place in a new one. For maximum compatibility with all variants of Model 1 floppy configurations, and to simplify the transfer process, I recommend sticking with the DMK image format, LDOS, single density, one-sided, 40 tracks. You can then drag in any TRS-compatible files that'll fit within the capacity, and if you exceed the available space, an alert will appear. Even if your Model 1 has a disk doubler, it'll still be easiest to stick with single density for this intermediary process and then handle double density formatting and disk copying on the machine itself using its native DOS commands. 
In my case, I purchased the game pack from legendary TRS-80 developer Nicholas Marentas, which includes classics like Donut Dilemma and a new game called Gem Hunter. I also grabbed new games from Peter Satinsky, including Breakdown and Roundup, so I moved all of these CMD files to the disk image in TRS Tools. When done, the image can be closed and will be ready to load into an emulator or otherwise transferred to a real floppy. To create readable disks from a PC, you'll have the best luck if you find a Windows 98 or lower system that has a floppy disk controller capable of writing single density FM tracks, even if using double density disk formats. A simple way to check this is by using the test FDC utility included in the image disk suite with a blank 5 and a quarter inch disk inserted. Test FDC will attempt to format, read, and write for single, double, and optionally high density media. While it can be more reliable if you have an original 360k drive, I have had plenty of success with 1.2 MB drives as well, and sometimes you can crudely emulate a 360k if needed by changing the settings in the BIOS. After checking a few vintage sets from XT series through Pentium, I found that my Packard Bell Platinum 750 was able to write single density and was a good candidate for the rest of this process. Now we can copy over the newly created disk image and any other tools necessary to the intermediary computer to do the actual floppy writing. Along with the new disk image compilation that we just created, I recommend copying the IMD suite, if not already on the machine, as well as David Keel's TRS-80 DOS emulator available from CPM Archives, and it's known as TRS-81-62. With his emulator, you'll also need to download the accompanying support.zip file and extract that to the same folder, which contains floppy images that will allow us to interface with both double density and HD drives from within the emulator. Finally, you'll need to copy over a disk image of some flavor of DOS. I recommend new DOS 80 for the simplicity of cloning a disk. To transfer all of this, it's easy enough to use a simple 3.5 inch USB floppy drive. Of course, if the intermediary computer is also networked, feel free to use MTCP or another FTP suite to transfer easily that way as well. From here, there are two different approaches to actually create the working floppy disk for your TRS-80, using either the DOS emulator or using IMD. I have found the emulator route to be the most configuration-free and reliable, especially if using a 1.2 MB high-density drive that requires double-stepping. Make sure you have the DOS TRS-80 emulator extracted along with the physical disk interfacing images, bootable TRS-based DOS disk image, such as new DOS 80, and your new virtual disk. Launch the emulator and press F9 to open the disk configuration screen. For disk 0, select the DOS image. Again, I prefer new DOS 80. For disk 1, select the TRS Tools created disk image that contains your desired applications. Then, for drive 2, select the corresponding disk image that matches your drive configuration as seen in this chart on the screen. In my case, I have an HD drive mapped to drive B on my IBM computer, so selected the FHD1 underscore 360.dsk image. After this is set, hit F10 to reboot the emulator. Now, insert a physical 5 and a quarter inch disk, preferably after bulk erasing it, and optionally run the format command to format it as a 40 track media disk. The emulator will automatically use double step if running from a 1.2 MB drive with the appropriate disk image previously selected. Assuming the format is successful and the disk is accessible, you can then do a simple copy backup command, such as copy 1, 2 in new DOS 80 to copy the image of drive 1 over to the physical drive 2. If all goes well, and this will take a while, it should slowly copy over the contents of your disk image to the physical disk media. When done, you can eject drive 1 from the emulator and then test the contents of physical drive 2 from within the emulator as well. Now, eject the physical disk from the intermediary machine, boot your physical TRS-80 machine using a compatible DOS such as new DOS-80, Insert the new disk into the secondary drive, or in place of the DOS disk if you only have one drive, and then attempt to run a file.
Hopefully, you'll have access and be on your way to discovering the wealth of applications for this iconic machine of decades past in a very authentic manner. As a side note, if you ever want to convert basic files to CMD files, or vice versa, or convert any format into WAV for transferring via cassette basic, you can use Lawrence Kesselut's TRS-80 tool from the command line to do any number of conversions. If you instead opt to use the image disk software, you'll find that there are many particulars that you'll have to get familiar with, including command line parameters, DMK slash DSK conversion to IMD, manual collaboration in the program settings per disk, and more, often requiring a slow process of trial and error to see what works best with all of your hardware. Again, my recommendation is to just stick with the DOS TRS-80 emulator to handle all of the intricacies automatically. But if you do want to explore the IMD method, there's a video by Adrian's Digital Basement that talks more about that. IMD will work best if you have a 360k disk drive and are only working with single density writes, and it is much less forgiving about any discrepancies that the emulator actually allows. Good luck and have fun.